up, ANA fam? Lay. It's Abby. Omori, and, and we, we are, are the ANA duo. duo. We're here back with another video. Yes, sir. And it is Tupac Tuesdays. <laughs> Service. I've been a certain uh, interview, you feel me? If feel you guys me? haven't checked out the other two boys, please go and check it out. If you're new, thanks for the love and thanks for the subscriber, guys. But let's get right into the video. In three, two, two one. one. I, it ain't that weird to me. <laughs> no, the quality ain't that good. No, you gotta yeah, deal with it. Alright, give me a characterization of your I was the total opposite of what I am right now. I was quiet, withdrawn, I read a lot, I wrote poetry. At what point in your early life were you introduced to this quote-unquote thug mentality? When I was out there by myself with nowhere to stay and no money. Which city? Bits of it was in Baltimore. Pieces of it was in uh, Marin City. And then the rest came in Oakland. And what was your first LA. introduction? Drug dealers, uh, pimps, oh, we've seen this. prostitutes. Yeah. That's really it. Criminals. They just, they the only people that cared about me at that point. When I had nowhere to go, but you and said I was your hungry. mother always cared about you. She did, but she was lost at that particular moment. She She's wasn't she cared about right herself right. at that moment. <laughs> and what was that like to have a mother who was addicted to crack? I love my mom. She the bond to me, so. I know I she is now, mistakes. but what about then? It was hard. It was hard because, you know, she was my hero. What did you do when you stopped going to school? I only had two jobs ever in my life. One was in Round Table Pizza. I used to make the pizza, but it was good. It was the perfect job to have it because I was hungry and I got to like eat all the toppings off people's pizza. That's why I ate because the, all everything is right there. Can you just imagine this? I was making pizzas on the side. <laughs> Bringing pizzas home. I'm calling in my own deliveries. Hello. I'm saying. This, you know, <laughs> that's just supposed to be for 11 months. He, he yeah, didn't do that in the other video. video. Yeah. Look what the fuck. Didn't think there was vitamin though. Do you it's think it's important to tell your fans that it's not cool to end up? Yeah. In jail. I don't have any problem telling people it's not cool to go to jail because I've been there and it's not cool. When I was pregnant in jail, I thought I was going to have a baby and the baby would never be with me, but I was acquitted a month and three days before Tupac was born. I was real happy because I had a son. When I was young, my mama had Just months after he went to jail for sexual abuse, his third solo album, Me Against the World, went directly to number one. Tupac Shakur was born in New York City in 1971. His mother was a gang member and later a member of the militant radical group, the Black Panthers. His father is unknown. Tupac was a ghetto kid, first in New York, then Baltimore, then Marin City, California. The hip hop scene in Northern California was big. And so when Tupac auditioned for Digital Underground, he was hired as a roadie and a dancer. Later in 1991, he cut his first solo album, Tupacalypse Now one with the anti-police lyrics that sent Dan Quayle up the wall. As an actor, Shakur has appeared in three... Digital Underground. I heard that before. I, it's not It's not of, of the last interview, but I heard it from, from a song before, like someone yeah. talking about Digital I remember Underground. Tup yeah, it's true. I don't know if Tupac was the one that I heard that song from. I don't think it, it was Tupac. I remember, I think it was Eminem. I remember he said, like, a Digital Underground. And like, one of the dun 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 it's for no favors. If you guys, I you guys should know what song I'm talking about. But I heard him say "Digital Underground." <laughs> I just never knew what it was. You're a mad hard. Digital Underground. That's that's how that's how he rapped in that song. That's why I'm saying it. That's so surprising. Quail up the wall. As an actor, Shakur has appeared in three movies: Above the Rim, Poetic Justice, and Juice. And Juice. His first and favorite. That's what it's all about. See how scared you are. Don't you get tired of this? Mm -hmm. What the? You want for me? <laughs> um, the chance to make right from all the bad things that I got. 1994 saw Tupac in and out of court. Damn. And in so and out again. Yeah. He was found guilty of sexual abuse and sent to jail for up to four and a half years. Right four now, he's out on bail pending his appeal. Since his release, he's rarely left the studio where he's recording tracks for his upcoming double album. Please. You got to keep your head up. Hey, don't film this though, man. This 
private, man. Yeah. So just tell me how you've been feeling with all the stuff that's been going on the last couple of weeks. Good, relieved, um, happy to be home. It's a trip when you, when you know that last week you were in jail and I was in this little cell and it was real dirty and I didn't have any hot water and dudes were telling me when to shower, when to eat and all of that. And then the next, the next week I'm up in Monty's with uh, champagne and filet mignon and lobster <laughs> and shrimps. Did you ever feel like your life was threatened in jail? By the guards, not by the inmates. But they just did everything they could do to try to break me because I used to talk a lot of you know, come yeah. out of jail. No, I, not you. I don't know, I don't know. It's hard to believe you, Tabitha, but you just got to picture it. But, um, you know, they would say things, because they would call you, I, jail was the first place when I can go, and they just went, well, as soon as I got there, they went, there he goes. And he goes, who? And he goes, there's the rich nigga. I was like, oh, sh he said nigga. He said nigga. And everybody was looking at me like, so? And I was like, oh, my God. This is where we be staying? <laughs> Niggas in one of your records. Nick Gus. He's talking about Nick Gers. Nick Gers was the ones on the rope hanging out the thing. Nick Gus is the ones with gold ropes hanging Whoa. out the clubs. Well, maybe not every. Damn. Yo. Yo. What? That definition, though? <sighs> Solid. Solid, right? Everyone's aware of the differentiation. They don't have to be everyone. If you're not a nigga and you don't use you that word, don't you don't have to understand. Word. It's just not one of those things. How did you meet the girl involved in the alleged rape? Yeah, that again. I'm not a nigga. You don't, don't have to understand. Word. It's just not. It's aware of the differentiation. They don't have to be everyone. If you're not a nigga and you don't use you that word, don't you don't have to understand. Word. It's just not one of those things. How did you meet the girl involved in the alleged? I was just checking that because I wanted to hear like his idea of other people saying it. So I feel like him trying to say that as like if you not one or if you haven't used the term it's like you know it really depends on the type of scenery that you're around because the word nigga is used loosely sometimes in the wrong thing but you know for example if we use it like yeah like oh okay i get it oh we're not but but it's like we were raised around that our environment was raised around that new york is exactly nothing but that oh, and yeah. a lot of people say that like that's just how we are and that's a per that's perfectly um understandable for some people that that understand the double meaning under that because when we say that it's not more so like trying to call somebody offensive it's just like you're my friend like that's my homie blah, blah, blah. yeah um i just feel like in this you know time of place now that we're in um people use it in the wrong time i feel like the only the only um people that really don't see it is the ogs I feel like yeah. those, those are the main ones that don't really say it because you got to understand during that time, around their time is when, you know, when the N-word was thrown like, like randomly, you know, like yeah. a lot of times and they, and they feel like that word is offensive and they felt that way at that time. So why in the world would they say it, you know, you know, wit, you know, willingly yeah. when they didn't like the word in the first place, even though it is pronounced different, it has like two different, it has like different letters at the end. But still, they they still find offense, which a is huge difference. Which yeah. is which is understandable. I totally get it. I can't blame anybody during during that that time to find that word offensive, especially right. like trying to say it now. No, I completely understand that. But the way how we grew up and the way how other people say it is nothing like harm. It like there's like there's no animosity when it comes to it. Like we just say like yo, what's up? Like you know, and we yo, don't ever like, make you know. this channel a race thing. Just saying, never. Like a anything or anybody that ever has to say anything about us, for that we are the most equality people and respect. I got a shirt to prove it. Sizes. I got a shirt like, to prove it, but I don't have it on me right now. But <laughs> all you know. I know is our channel and the people around us. We accept everybody and anybody, no matter who you love, no matter who you are, no matter what color you are, no matter your race. We love everybody. Yes, sir. Get back into it. Great. Right. I met her in the club. Some guys introduced me to her. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> I met her in the club. Some guys introduced me to her. And she was very forward with you? Extremely. And what happened? She did some things. And Sexual we things? We got together, yeah. She did some things there at the club. We got together later that night. I saw her again another time with these guys that introduced me to her. Um, everybody was having a good time, not doing anything sexually, just having a good time. I went and me and her went in there, she gave her a massage, came out, went to sleep, woke up, she screaming rape, rape, I raped her, and the next thing I know I'm going to jail. 
So in your opinion, there was no truth to the sexual abuse charges? Obviously not. not at all. If you could go back to the night when the sexual abuse occurred, is there anything that you would do differently? Yeah. What? I would not have um, closed my eyes until she was out of the room, until everybody was out of the room. I've grown up mm. with tons of wild stories from lots of legendary rock bands and things that they did with their groupies. Do you feel like there's a double standard for black artists and white artists and how they entertain their groupies? Yes, it is a double standard because it, America's scared of a black man's sexuality. And they only see us as brutes who can only go, hammer girl. They just can't imagine us being any other way. And that's why it was so easy for people to believe that I could do this. It seemed like there was a time, though, that you were definitely reveling in the image of sort of being wild and crazy. And what got you off that path? Five hot bullets. Damn. Well, tell me what happened at the recording studios in Times Square. I got shot five times. I walked in, some dudes walked in and shot me up, um, took some jewelry. Do you know who shot you? No. Mm -hmm. Is that a no or is that a maybe? Well, no. So does that mean that you also have no idea why they shot you? No, I have no idea why they shot me. Do you think that they shot you just to get your jewelry? I don't know. It could be anything. It's like anybody's guess. I don't know. Yeah. Jealousy. I don't really like to talk about it. At any point, did you think that you were going to die after being shot five times? No. <laughs> Bro. Bro, he just said, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> she kept going. I'm not going to lie. Their relationship seems a little bit more easy. There. She kind of knows how to ask a little bit more questions better. I feel like it was a better relationship here. Um, but yeah, that was not straightforward. I think he just said he doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. At any point, did you think that you were going to die after being shot five times? No. No, I didn't. Immediately, I was like, God, man. I know how it's going to be. When I die, it's gonna be no, no noise. You know, people screaming. I'm fade out. You were on trial for sex abuse charges at the time of the shooting. I was on trial for rape and sodomy and guns possessions and forcible kidnapping, 50 pounds, 18 charges. Damn, man. That's why I wanted to die at that point. Cause I was like, you know, I mean, I'm tired. But I lived and I was like, well, you know, I can't check out. So you felt suicidal? Oh, definitely. It wasn't like I was one day waking up wanting to commit suicide. Just all around felt suicidal. But I couldn't kill myself. I just wanted somebody to kill me for me. Oh you know what goodness. I mean? Um, yeah, you were still happy you survived the five gunshot wounds. The only reason I was happy was because I didn't want them to take me out. You know, I want honor, man. Suckers that want to rob you, taking you out. You know what I mean? That's cowardly. Do you feel rehabilitated? That's what they try to do in jail. No, nah, jail is not a rehabilitation thing. I feel like I've grown and matured. I don't think jail had anything to do with it, though. Tell me what you've been recording in the studio since you got out of jail. Okay. The Youth and Asians, the name of the album. It's a double album I'm releasing for Christmas. It's going to have Snoop on it. Me and him did a song called Two of America's Most Wanted. Uh, that that song is dope. dope. I love that yes. song. And we Here's did react to it. Here's some of that new it. album. Hear how Tupac thinks he's changed as a person since jail and how he'd like his fans to see him now when the MTV interview continues. So you were telling me earlier about two of no, America's most wanted. Yeah. Can you play me a little? Oh yes. This is with Snoop, right? Yep, yep, yep. This is me and Snoop. Two of America's most wanted. <laughs> How long did it take you to record that? Was it just one day in the one studio? One day in the studio. Oh, that was one of two other songs I did I that day. Do you feel like rappers should be more responsible for their lyrics? Um, yes. What would you define as irresponsible? You talk about murder and death, you talk, and you don't talk about the pain. Or you talk about killing and robbing and stealing, you don't talk about jail and death and betrayal and all the things that go with it. A lot of people would characterize your music as gay. Yo. I'm just glad, like, he pointed that out, and he really was, like, getting, you can tell he was getting, like, fed up, because he's like, oh, like, you're talking about all of this, bro, like, I'm, I'm talking about an experience, like, it's nothing just gang, death, rape, assault, it's not only that, like, you're, 
you know, he has to talk about his side of the pain that he went through, like how that messes up a person mentally and how it built him to be the person that he is right there in that video. Mm-hmm. Gangster rap. Do you? No. Why not? Juan Brando's not a gangster actor. He's an actor. Axl Rose and them are not gangster rock and rollers. They're rock and rollers, right? So, I'm a rapper. This is what I do. I'm an artist. Mm. Well, what's on this stat that you yeah. play us? This one's called Life Goes On. It's like talking about all the deaths that we have. Now you just got to get over it. Now. We didn't react to this, all right? Did we? No, right? Does anything that Bob Dole says make any sense to you as far as rap is concerned? No, I don't have no disrespect towards Bob Dole. I know he don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> he's just talking. Mm. Some, some card that somebody gave him, he's just reading off that card. But he's cute, you know what I mean? He's my mm. grandfather. One of the characterizations made of rappers often is that they're very boastful. It seems like right now you're taking pains to be humble and look at things from a very realistic perspective. Is that yeah. accurate? Mm -hmm. I think being humble is sexy. <laughs> that's, a, that's my new put. I'm pushing so humble. You're, be, you're being humble I'm, to get I'm, chicks? I'm trying to turn you on, Tabitha, as a matter of fact. I'm hoping my humble thing is going to get to you. <laughs> so you got married in prison. What happened with that? What? It didn't work. Not because of her or me or jail. It just wasn't the right thing to do at the time. What? I married her. How did you get married in prison? I don't know. I didn't even know that was even possible. <laughs> I don't know. Probably a priest came when they did, was visiting and they did it right there. I guess so. Mm. Me or jail. It just wasn't the right thing to do at the time. I married her for the wrong reasons. What were the reasons? I cared about it, but I married her because I was in jail, I was alone, I didn't oh. want to be alone. And How would you compare sense. how you're handling fame and fortune so he used her in 1995 for, to uh, how you did a couple of years ago? I believe I'm more responsible, more mature, and more focused. And I will be more focused and even more responsible and even more mature in time. It seemed like the two sides of Tupac were constantly battling with each other. One minute you're spitting at TV cameras, the next you're talking about Shakespeare. Have you reconciled those two? Um, hopefully. <laughs> I like to think so. I think that I'm really, I was a reactionary. And now I don't do that anymore. Same person, it's just I don't react. Before I reacted, I didn't like the cameras, I spit. The last time we talked, you said that you were best known for your big mouth. What do you feel like you're best known for now? Taking five bullets. Wow. That, That's surviving. Cool. I'm known as a survivor now. I hope so. For the jail thing, bullets and the everything. <laughs> Controversies and everything. I hope so. And I want to be in the future known as somebody, you know, I want people to be talking about me like, you know, look, remember when he was real bad? Really, when two was real bad, you know what I mean? They do that about a lot of actors now. Like John Travolta, I read stories, and he's like, remember you were wild? And all these other people, and now they like, they're sweethearts. We all should get that chance. I just want my chance. Wow. Well, there you go. You got your chance, because whatever bad you think was, uh, what was think nothing what was good the, of you. What was the last thing that he said? I couldn't hear him. He was like that he wants to be known for something like... No, no, he was talking about like about like actors being talked about a certain way and he mentioned the actor's name and he said, yeah. I say yeah because like John Travolta, he yeah. was known to do wild things before. Like and what? now he's like, just crazy. Oh, oh okay. Crazy. It's just certain behaviors that people do. Like, for example, Miley Cyrus, hers was reversed. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you remember how crazy Miley Cyrus was when she started wrecking ball and all that, stuff like that. And then they'd be like, oh, you see how nice she was? She did it reverse though. She decided to become innocent first with Hannah Montana and all that. Then she went crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's but Hannah Montana was just a character that I wasn't. Really I know, hurt. but regardless, when she was singing, she still sang um, stuff that was innocent. Party in the State, um, Seven Things I Hate About You. Those were innocent songs. Okay, I can't believe we're talking about Hannah Montana and Tupac. <laughs> but movie. but anyways, anyways, that video. I don't know how we came across that, but okay. <laughs> that video was actually. Um, pretty interesting. I really like how deep they got into it. I really like their connection more there. And I just love how Tupac 
doesn't get like he doesn't let himself get played like if he's gonna say something and he wants to talk about something he talks about it and he's super blunt with it like that's just oh, blunt. what i love about his personality which is really good um yes, and sir. why it entertains me so much when i watch two blunt interviews you keep going <laughs> yes sir yes <laughs> now Thanks for watching our video, guys. Go ahead and subscribe if you guys haven't already for Tupac Tuesday. You want to watch us for Tupac, go ahead and subscribe. Or for anything else, comment down below and also subscribe also for that. doesn't matter. We do everything here in this channel. Yes, sir. And like I said in the last video, December 1st, we're going to start our Vlogmas, guys. So definitely tune into that. Trust me. We are really funny. We're really fun. We're cool. And we want to interact with you guys. So um, just a little bit more like we enjoy the love that you guys spread in those comments. Um, I also wanted to tell you guys I really appreciate the fact that you guys watched our end of videos to the ending and you left those black hearts. Really, really just showed how much there is support for us um, from the beginning to the end of these videos. Um, but yeah, go stay tuned to those videos. Start turning on those notification bells and comment down below what you guys want to see for December 1st to the 31st for this Christmas spirit of this year. Mm -hmm. But of course, and, and like, like always, always, like, comment, and subscribe. And subscribe. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.